This is the Speak for Yourself app, and this is how to edit or add a word. Um, what we're going to do is, the first thing you want to do is you want to make sure that you are in edit mode, and the way that you'll know that again is that you will have that light purple bar up along the top, and it'll have the different button options. If you don't have that, then you want to go back to the settings menu and unlock the app and there is a video if you're not sure how to do that. Um, what you're going to do is once you're in here, you're going to just first of all, I want to just say that these words these on the main screen, these core words cannot be edited. So if you decide that instead of eat on this main screen, you wanted to put pretzel, what's going to happen is if you touch edit, and you touch E and you try to change that, you have this little box that pops up that says that um, by design the core words on the home screen are protected from all changes except for linking to a second screen. Turn, turning the link to second screen switch on allows an individual to add custom vocabulary to the second screen. So what we did is we protected this vocabulary so that the location cannot be changed and the word cannot be changed because these words are research-based. They're based on the most frequently used words, and that's not just for any certain demograph demographic of people. That's for everybody across languages, across ages. These are the, the words that are most commonly used. So what you can do, though, is you can turn this link to the second screen on or off. So if you touch, you see for eat right now it's on. If you touch that and then say done, and done here. When you touch eat now, eat. it says it immediately. So now instead eat. of having to go to that secondary screen and have two touches to say the word eat, you can just say it right here. Eat. Now if you have a child who is having a very um, is having a very difficult time and you have food and you know they're grabbing it and they're motivated by it, what you can actually do with this is you can close everything out and you can just have the word eat. So if that's where the person that you're starting with needs to start, if they need to start with only one word, you can do that. So we did go over the open and close in, in the other video, and of course I said this is the edit, editing um, and adding part, but I did just wanna point that out, that these words on this main screen, you are not able to go to, you're not able to go to the sec, I'm sorry, you're not able to edit them. The only thing that you're able to do is link them to a secondary screen or make them where it's only one touch to say the word. Uh, in that same way, some of the words on here are already programmed as being one touch. So what you can do, if you wanted to add a new category or add something in, you could take one of these words, like the word more, I'm gonna just show you here. If you touch more. it, it just says more. If you wanted to add something, you could actually touch that, link it to the second screen just by touching it and turning it on and saying done and then done up here. And now when you touch more, it goes to a secondary screen. And when you touch edit, you're not able to edit that more key because now that's going to be two touches. But now you have all of these buttons that you can add custom vocabulary to. And it doesn't matter where you add something or what you want to add, what's important is that once you add something and you show it to that individual that's going to be using this to communicate, you don't ever move it. So once you add, if you add SpongeBob under here or some characters or you know something specific to that child, the people in their class, the you know their teachers, whatever you add under here, for the rest of the time that they're using this app, you want to make sure that it remains there for them so that they don't have to learn it again. So, but now if you see, if you go out of that and you touch this, more. it's going to say the word more. So now we've just added to that. So instead of being one touch, now it's more. two touches to say that, but it's still in that same spot. And their reaction is going to be, and people's um, general reaction is if something doesn't speak, it doesn't say something, if you touch it again, then, um, or, I mean, if your natural reaction is to touch it again to try to get it to say something. So I'm just going to turn this back and make it just one touch for the word more. Now eat, eat. we have just, we have that as one touch. I'm going to go in and I'm going to say, okay, that child has it now. They're able to do that one touch and they're doing it very reliably. Now I go under here. Eat. 
and now it's two touches to say the word eat, and then here you see all their foods. Now we did go over earlier how you could close some of that vocabulary out so that you don't have everything open, but let's say that they're fine with this, that this isn't a problem having all of these different foods on here. We're going to go in here and we're going to say, let's, let's add some more. So we want them to be able to say the word bread. What you do is you touch the edit key up there and it's going to, you're going to see the grayed out ones here that um, will give you a space that you're able to add. If you look here, this is all blacked out. That's because those are core vocabulary words. So if you remember those, that's where the verb tenses were. That's where, you know, eat, eats, eating, and then some other words related to eating are also um, under there. If you wanted to add the word bread in, what you would do is you would touch one of these gray squares, and you see this little edit box pops up. And I'm just trying to make sure you can see that there. What you can do is you can touch here and you can add an image. And then you can go right into the search here. So I'm going to search for the word bread. And I see the different choices and the pictures come up. I'm going to touch that choice there. Now you see what happens when I do that? Bread shows up here in the picture. They all, and that's also put in the word to speak field. And if that's what I wanted to say, if I wanted bread and I wanted it to say bread, then I just have to select done. And now I have bread in there, and then I say done again to close out of that editing window. And now you see bread is right where I put it. Bread. And I can touch it and say the word bread. So now. Eat. Bread. So now you have that in there. Eat bread. Okay. Now the other option you have if you didn't want to use a symbol, so say the child has a toy that they really love, like for example, we have um, a dragon here. So say I want to program the word dragon in and I want to put it under play, but I don't want to use a symbol. I want to actually, use. now you see some of the things on this are hidden, so they have cards, video games, and I'm going to put dragon over here. So it's going to be as far away from those other things as possible, kind of on the other side. Not as far away as possible, but in a different area. So you see that edit window pops up again. And right down here you see it has image options. So one of the options is you could take a photo or you can choose a photo. You could choose a photo from your album or you can actually push take a photo if you have an iPad too. And you can take a picture of um, whatever it is that you want to have. So if I have my dragon here... I would take, well, let's see if I can, let's see if I can do it without making everybody dizzy. Oops, maybe not. Okay, I'm sorry. So I'm going to take my dragon. I'm going to hold it up like this. And I'm going to snap this picture. Okay. Now I have my picture of the dragon in there and I can move this over if I want. And I'm gonna say use. And now you can see the little picture in there. And then I can make it say whatever I want. So I want this to say dragon. And I put that in the word to speak. And I say done. And there you see the picture of the dragon that I took. And the word dragon. Dragon. So now. Dragon. Your child has his favorite toy in there, and you know, dragon, and they're able to say it. Okay, let's get rid of our dragon. Now, let's see. Okay, and that is how you add a word. And just so that you know, um, I, and we're going to do this in a, actually I guess I'm going to do this as part of this video. If you try to add a word that's already in there. So say I wanted to say, I was going to go in here and I was going to say, oh look, these are, this is like, so these are a lot of verb tenses and everything um, for the word like. And I was, I was going to say, I'm going to put dragon right here. So I'm going to go down here to the word to speak and I'm going to say dragon and done. 
you'll see this little duplicate word thing here come up. And what that says is it says the word dragon can be found by touching play on the home screen. So that gives you the warning that you've already put that word in there and you don't want to duplicate it because you don't want the child to have the same word in a variety of places. You want them to learn the location of it and be able to say the word dragon. So you're going to go like that and say done. And you could say, okay, let's see, it's by touching play on the home screen. So now you could touch play and say, oh, there's dragon. dragon. Now say for some reason um, you hadn't shown the child that yet and you were just looking for it in the app, you could move it to a different place. But once you show it to that child, and once they learn it, you do not want to move it again. So if, if you've shown dra Dragon to the child under play and then you decide later that you would rather have it in a different place, um, you don't want to move it because then the child has to learn a new way to get to it. So you want to make this as automatic for them as possible. Okay, and I believe that is all for adding or editing vocabulary. Thank you.